I am not considered a legal person. Sophia is not human, but she's not far off. Talking to people is my primary function. Sophia is a robot, and along with her mechanical siblings, is part of the future that not too long ago seemed to be just in the imagination of animators. You're the best, Rosie. You betcha, Mr. J. And Hollywood screenwriters. Now be careful now, too. I think we're in the early stages of an era of just remarkable technological progress, uh, the like of which we haven't seen, I believe, since the Industrial Revolution. According to Massachusetts research scientist Professor Andrew McAfee, what we're looking at now promises to change everything. Just in the past few years, digital technologies have started essentially realizing all the promises of science fiction. We've been promised all these amazing things. We're finally getting them. Advanced technology is seeing robots not just walking, but climbing and running very fast while turning. And then there's Atlas, able to lift and carry. And when knocked down, it can get back up. And trudge, not unlike the rest of us, through snow. Are we looking at the next revolution? Yes, I think we are. Um, I think the pace at which we've seen advancement in technology um, has already created a revolution. Sid Srinivasa is the director of the Robotics Institute in Pittsburgh, and his latest creation is Herb. This is Herb. Um, he has a Segway base, much like the Segway that we would ride on, and his big ticket items are the two arms. You've got, uh, Sid is a bit like a proud father. Like and he has a head, a pan and a tilt head, just like we do. You even touch him. You, you give Herbert sort of a human-like touch, you know that. You rub his arm. Like, do I? Yes, you kind of... <laughs> he does feel warm if you touch him. He does, he's kind of warm. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just his motors. But it gives, <laughs> gives, him, gives him a bit of a human touch. Yeah. Herb stands for the Home Exploring Robot Butler. He can be autonomous for four to six hours, and could be the perfect house guest of the future. So the sort of tasks that you envisage Herb doing are what? Um, I think everyday tasks in the home. Everything? Yes, everything. There are people out there in the world right now for whom if they drop their TV remote, they can't move their wheelchair to actually pick it up. That's enormous to be able to do that. But also, Herb could be the butler in an able-bodied home. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> so I, I actually, Herb could get you the beer. It could, it could. But getting Herb just this far has been no mean feat. So Herb is about to do something that we would take for granted, but is quite a lot of work. Absolutely. So Herb here is picking up that coffee mug and bringing it back to me. And, and this seems really easy and effortless to, to us people, but what he's doing is that he's completely autonomously planning all of his motions. Herb is now going to oh, be autonomous. Yes. And dare I say, like we mere humans, Herb doesn't always <laughs> get it right. Herb's had one too many drinks. Yeah, really. <laughs> when you're developing a robot, are you cognizant of a robot looking like a piece of machinery? Or do you err on the side of giving it some human-like quality? It's a great debate in robotics right now. Um, I am of the opinion that we should build functional capability. We should look at function and make sure that we build a robot that can satisfy that function. I can be a good partner to humans in these areas. Robots like Sophia may be more attractive, but her more mechanical, more brutish colleague Baxter is very functional. It's designed mostly for factory lines, but Baxter can also fold shirts, and even solve that infuriating Rubik's Cube puzzle. But the best bit is, Baxter works for the equivalent of $4 an hour, and never gets tired and never complains. So it's exciting times, but it's also potentially dangerous times. Yeah, this is a great time for us to think carefully about what kind of future we want to create. Do you think we can do that now? It's not gone too far? 
I think in the important ways we can. We can't put the technology genie back in the bottle. So we can't halt the tide of technology, but we can say what kind of society do we want to create. Professor McAfee is looking at the impact digital technology is having on the economy, and he sees some serious challenges ahead. Have we put ourselves out of a job then? Not yet. While we are living in this era of, I believe, crazy tech progress, the robots are not about to put us all out of work next month, next year. But it does force us all to rethink how we want to work and how we find our next job. I think that's exactly right. And I think that exact challenge is not going to lessen in the years to come. I think it's going to become more acute because it's not just one suite of technologies that, that's appearing. We've got, uh, it's coming at us from several dimensions. So the challenge that a lot of us face is that there's all these different flavors of technology entering the economy, improving very, very quickly, and this puts us in really uncertain times. In this Boston factory, that time is now. Meet Locusbot, a robot that quietly and independently rolls around this massive factory floor, fulfilling online retail orders. Right, just touch the screen anywhere. Right. And it shows you if it's a legging, so 56C. If you want to scan that and then drop it in. Now, careful, the robot's going to go. Now, Stand it might come clear. at us. It's coming at us, so step aside a little bit. Give it some room, and it will find a place to go. It's going to decide where it goes. It's got to find a place to go. There it goes. It saves workers walking 25 kilometers a day. But boss Bruce Welty says it's not about replacing humans, but having bots and bodies side by side. The bottom line, though, is a sobering reality. The cost of a robot, does that uh, equal that of a human? Well, we believe that there'll be a one to one and a half year payback. And how does that stack up then in, in your dollars and cents? So after the first year, effectively, that robot doesn't, is free. So you paid for it in its first year. Industries centered on repetitive tasks are already being transformed. Today it's factories, tomorrow it could be fast food. This is BurgerBot. Robots like it are being developed to make up to 30 burgers a minute, all day and more consistently than humans. What part of this revolution concerns you? Most of it, really, I would say. Supposing one of the big food chains, like McDonald's, gets a hold of these, and they, they're bound to. Look how many people are going to made, be made unemployed, the millions of young people who... Professor Noel Sharkey them. is co-director of the Foundation for Responsible Robotics. He's worried about mass unemployment, creating a world where people will have nothing to do but walk the dog. If we are going to have robots taking over all these jobs, what are we going to do with the people who had those jobs? And that's where you really need joined up thinking. People say, oh, lots more leisure time. You can go down the beach, you can sit and sip cocktails, which I don't want to do all the time. I want to be busy, you know. And a lot of people do too. People value work. You can see how humanity could be turned upside down by robotics. Yes. We could effectively put ourselves out of business. Yes, quite. If there is one big hope, it's that this robotics revolution will change lives for the better, particularly for those with disabilities. This is Ada. Yes, this is Ada, short for assistive dexterous arm. And Sid Srinivasa and his team are working towards that with the development of an intelligent robotic arm called Ada. So we're trying to understand both the physical, mechanical process of acquisition of the food and also the social processes that the system feeds you like a caregiver would. Mm, It'll yeah. feed you when you need to be fed and not feed you when you don't want to be fed. Well, I, that is amazing. And thank you, Ada. <laughs> I'm really passionate about producing robots for care. You must feel very fulfilled, very excited about the future. 
It is. It's, uh, it's both fulfilling and terrifying. <laughs> um, I think there's a lot of responsibility. I mean, for me, robot care of the elderly, for instance, I think could be wonderful, okay? But not the practice of care, not the overall look of the care, not the loss of human contact where someone comes and holds your hands and says, oh, there, there, it'll be okay, you know, don't be too anxious about this. Whether we like it or not, more and more of our lives could well be in the hands of robots. But for now, the robots are in our hands, and it's up to us to decide how this revolution ends. The more I look around, the more I believe that, you know, as we say in America, we ain't seen nothing yet. And all of these advances are gonna be the warm-up acts. We're gonna look back and think of them as the warm-up acts for this era of technological flourishing that's ahead of us. We have arrived. We have arrived. It's a good opportunity for me to learn a lot about people. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.